Welcome to Call Tracking Metrics Fast Start Webinar. I wanted to give you a quick overview about how to get started and some of the best ways to use the Call Tracking Metrics software. First, let's start with tracking numbers. So in a nutshell, a tracking number works by either appearing on your website or on an offline advertisement, such as a TV ad, a radio ad, or even a business card, so that you are able to attribute calls to that source when a phone call comes in through that tracking number. In general, you should set up a tracking number for each advertising source or channel that you want to track. Each tracking number needs just two things at a minimum in our system. It needs a receiving number, which is where you want your calls to forward to, and it needs a source, which is whatever advertising channel you're tracking with that tracking number. Now there are different sources that you can track with our tracking numbers. On-site sources are numbers that appear on your website. So um, tracking numbers using an on-site source would be tracking things like Google AdWords or Google Organic or Facebook. Off site number, numbers are tracking sources that appear off of your website. So in places like TV ads, print ads, radio ads. Now when you're using a tracking number for an on-site source, like Google AdWords for example, each time a phone call comes in through that tracking number, we're going to attempt to match a website visitor to each of your phone calls. Now the way that we do that is that we have a piece of JavaScript code that goes on your website and that JavaScript code does two things. The first thing is that it actually swaps the phone number on your website to be the correct tracking number for the channel that that visitor came through. The other thing that the tracking script does is that it uh, tracks your visitors and collects information like which search keywords they use to come to your site, which referring URL they came through, and lots of other information that you'll see surface in your reports. Um, our code, this tracking script, is going to look for the receiving numbers on your website and it will swap it to the correct tracking number for the channel of that visitor. Also, it cookies your visitors to the original source or channel that they came to your visit from for a default period of 30 days. That means if they came to your website from a Google AdWords click and then two weeks later they came back from a Google organic search, we're going to continue to show them the Google AdWords tracking number because that's the original way that they came to you from. We often get the question, how many tracking numbers do I need? In general, you want to be as granular as you want your reporting to be. Um, if you have one tracking number for all of your TV ads, you're not going to necessarily be able to tell which TV ad is performing the best. For on-site or online sources like Google AdWords, Google Organic, you should use the rule of thumb of having one tracking number for every 40 daily visitors from that channel or source. So for example, in the example here on the screen, if you get 400 daily clicks from Google AdWords, you should have 10 tracking numbers um, that's associated with the source of Google AdWords. Now let's talk about setting up a new number. Um, you'll start um, by going to the Buy Numbers page, which is always found right up here at the top of your screen. Click on that and you'll be able to search through numbers in a variety of different ways. Um, you'll use the country drop down to select the country that you want to search in and then you can search by local, toll free, near an address, near a particular phone number that you want to try to match to and you'll find your results here when you search. Once you've found the numbers that you like, you move them over to the right side to configure them. Let's say I want to start with four tracking numbers. You'll see the first piece of information you need to enter is the receiving number, which is where you want these phone calls to go to. And then the next piece of information is the tracking source that you want to track with this phone number. This is the advertising channel. Now you'll notice in this dropdown already exists most of the advertising channels that you probably would want to track with this number. However, you can just type in a new one to create a new one. But let's say in this example I want to track television and I want to track Google AdWords and I want to track Google Organic and I also want to do a general referral number, which will show up on my website to anyone coming from a source other than Google AdWords or Organic. And then once you've got them all configured, you hit buy numbers and you're ready to go. Now one thing to note about toll-free numbers that we often get a question about is if you're looking for a true 800 number, you'll notice that we oftentimes do not have them available because they get taken very quickly and they are in short supply. We partner with a website called 800forall.com. They specialize in collecting 800 numbers and you can do a search here and if you find a number that you like here, you can purchase it and you can choose the option to transfer it to our RESTBORG. 
You'll see instructions for doing this on our website right here. If you try searching for an 800 number, you'll, number, you'll see instructions for how to transfer your number from 800 for all to us. If you have any questions about it, definitely let us know. Now, once you've purchased your numbers, what we usually recommend you do is you go in to check your tracking sources. And any sources that you've already uh, created numbers for will appear here. If you need to make any adjustments to your sources, you can do that here. Now, if you wanted to create a new source, I'll show you how to do that. You'll notice again that we have a number of sources already pre-programmed for you. So you can choose one of them and it automatically sets up the configuration for you. Or you can create one um, on your own over here. Now, a couple things to note about creating um, a custom source. Um, if you're creating a custom source that's dynamically going to be displaying phone numbers on your website, um, let's say this is Craigslist or something like that, um, you'll want to make sure that you choose source type on site if this again is a number that's appearing dynamically on your website and then you'll notice that you need to either configure the number using a referring URL pattern or landing URL pattern. In the example of Craigslist I would just want to look for a Craigslist in the referring URL. If you're setting up a source that is an off-site source, let's say this is a postcard that you're mailing out, you would choose off-site because this is a phone number or source that's going to be associated with phone numbers that are not dynamically appearing on your website. You choose the source type off-site and you hit save tracking source and you're all set. If you have questions about setting up custom sources, you can use this link here to go to our documentation area to see a lot of detail about how you can go about creating a custom source. Now let's talk a little bit about receiving numbers. Your receiving numbers are all listed here in the receiving numbers page and you can add new receiving numbers here as well. You will see the tracking numbers that are associated with each of your receiving numbers here on this page. Now let me click edit next to these and show you some of the advanced options here. Um, one thing to note is that you can add a secondary number for your receiving numbers. What this is is basically a fallback number that you can set if the first receiving number does not answer the phone call within a certain amount of seconds. Now another thing that you can do from the receiving numbers page is you can add what we call a custom format. And I'll show you how to do that. A custom format is needed if the phone number that is hard coded on your website is different than the receiving number for your tracking numbers. You would come into your receiving number for your tracking numbers and you would scroll down to add a custom format here. This custom format should be entered as the phone number that appears hard-coded hard on your website. Okay, so you'd enter that here and you would choose phone number match and save that. That tells our tracking script to look for this phone number and swap it if it finds it to a tracking number. If you go to your Manage Tracking Numbers page, again, you'll see all of your tracking numbers listed here. You can always update the source here, and you can update the receiving number right here from this page. If you want to add multiple receiving numbers to your tracking number, you would click Edit next to your tracking number, and then you would come to this page. You'll notice that on the right, you have a couple of options. You can assign another receiving number, and choose another receiving number to forward calls to from this tracking number. Or you could also add a brand new receiving number if the receiving number that you want to enter does not yet exist in our system. Let's say you've got two phone numbers and you want to route your phone calls to both of these numbers. You'll notice that you have the option to set up a schedule for each of these numbers where you can choose when you want each of the receiving numbers to be receiving phone calls. You can also choose to simultaneously ring both of these receiving numbers and whoever answers it first gets the phone call. You could round robin your phone calls, so maybe you want to evenly distribute your phone calls between two receiving numbers. You could choose that option. You also have the ability to set up voice menus in our system. Voice menus allow you to present your callers with a series of key press options that they can use to be routed to different places. So I'll show you quickly how these are set up. For each of your voice menus, you would add different key press options, and these would be the options that you would present your callers with in an audio message that you would configure up here. You can choose a variety of actions each time someone presses one of the key presses. For example, if your callers press two, you can choose to dial a number and play a message to the caller as the call is being transferred. One other advanced routing option is geo-routing, and I'll show you how this is set up. Geo-routing allows you to distribute your phone calls by the caller's location. So it involves setting up basically radiuses for your various offices so that if a caller calls in and they are within the radius of one of your office locations, we'll automatically route them to that closest office 
or you can present them with a voice prompt that asks them to enter their five digit zip code and based on that information, we'll route them to your closest office location. Now call settings within the numbers menu is where you come to set up things like your recordings and your whispers. You'll notice when you come to this page on the left side, you'll have an account level configuration when you first create your account and you can create as many configurations as you want. And on the right side, you choose which of your tracking numbers you want applied to each of your configuration. In the middle is where you actually set up the nuts and bolts of the configuration. So here you can turn on and off call recording. By default for all accounts it's on, but you can turn it off. There's no cost implications for having it on or off. You can also choose to create a message that your callers hear, such as this call is being recorded, and you can um, record your own audio or upload your own audio here as well. You can also turn on and off caller ID here as well, and then you can set up receiving party whispers, which are whispers that will play to the person picking up the phone on the receiving end. There's two types of whispers. This is an account level whisper, which will play the same whisper for your whole account, or you can turn on a source announcement whisper, which will announce the particular advertising channel associated with that tracking number that that call's coming through. So it'll say something like new call from Google Organic if that caller called the Google Organic tracking number. Now let me show you an example of the tracking script and where you can find that. That's found within the numbers menu. It's the last page here under tracking code. This is the tracking script that you'll install on your website if you're wanting to have dynamic number swapping happening for your online visitors. Once you've installed this, one of the most common questions that we get is how do I test this? It can be a little tricky to test because remember we cookie you and so if you have already come to your website from a channel that you're not tracking, you won't see the number swapping happening. So we recommend that you use Chrome Incognito mode, which is right up here in the file menu, New Incognito Window. You'll open up a new incognito window and you should try to mimic coming from one of the advertising channels that you're tracking in an incognito window. For example, if you're tracking Google AdWords as one of your advertising channels, you would come into incognito and you would enter your website URL and then you would add question mark GCLID equals test at the end of it. This allows you to mimic a PPC click from AdWords without having to actually click on one of your ads. If you have any questions about testing your sources, I recommend that you take a look at our help center, which you can find right here, and you'll see within the um, you'll see within the dynamic number insertion section a whole article about how to test your number swapping. Now let's talk about reporting. A couple setup notes about your account for your reporting. We highly recommend that you link your account to Google Analytics if you are looking to track any online advertising. You can do that within the settings menu by going to account settings. And then within the metrics integration area, go to Google Analytics. You'll be able to link your account right here to your Google Analytics profile. By linking your account to Google Analytics, you do two things. The first thing is every time a call comes in through call tracking metrics, it's going to appear as an event in Google Analytics. The other thing that happens when you link your account to Google Analytics is that your call tracking metrics reports can be populated with interesting information related to your pay-per-click visitors in particular. So within your call reports area, you'll see information about which ad campaigns, ad groups, ad keywords, and even ad networks led to each of your phone calls. This all happens through that interaction between CTM and Google Analytics. Now once your phone calls start coming in, you're going to see them appear here in the call log. The call log is your real-time view of your calls coming in. Now a couple important things to note about this. Starting on the far left, you can edit any of your caller information by clicking on this green pencil here and then anytime they call again in the future, that information will persist. You'll see the source of the call, which is based on the number that they, they dialed in on. And then you'll see source detail. And this is, uh, appears for any of your online uh, advertising channels or sources that you're tracking. When you click on the detail of this, you're going to see some information about the visitor that we match to that caller. Now, you'll see the referring URL, you'll see the keyword that they came in on, and then you'll see the landing URL. You'll also see the likelihood score, which is again that confidence rating that we have that this visitor made this phone call. If you'd like to actually mark conversions here in the call log and have that appear in our reporting, you can enter a sale for this call here, and you can assign a customer service rep to the call. You can associate a particular revenue amount to the call as well. Now, if you have um, any 
telemarketers or someone like that that you want to block from calling, you can block them right here. You can also exclude calls from your reports. Maybe you're making test calls and you'd like to exclude, exclude them from your reporting. And then finally, you can email a notification of a call to someone, which will include a summary of the call, and the, the person um, receiving the email can click a, a link to listen to the audio of that call. Now, this is a demo account, so it doesn't have real audios, but if in your account, if you have recording turned on, you'll be able to click right here to listen to your audio recordings. Now, also notice that the call log is filterable and exportable as well. A couple other popular reports that people like to use, the overview report. The overview report is your roll-up view of all of your call statistics, and you'll see some top-level stats um, there in the beginning part, and then as you scroll down, you'll see some common breakdowns of your phone calls. The call reports give you the next level down in the data. On the left side of your call reports, as phone calls start coming in, you'll be able to click through these to see different cuts of your data, starting with calls by source, going all the way down to calls by search terms. And for your pay-per-click specific channels, you'll be able to see things like your calls by ad keyword and your calls by ad group. The ROI report is an interesting report and it surfaces any um, revenue conversion information that you enter into the call log. On the ROI report, you're able to enter your advertising spend for your advertising sources or channels and the system's going to automatically calculate some, some statistics for you about your um, call closure rate and as well as your revenue that you're bringing in from each of your advertising channels. It'll also give you an ROI roll-up score for each of them. Now, some other integrations that I want to mention that some people find interesting. If you go into the settings area and you go to account settings, you're going to see several options here. In metrics integration, we talked about Google Analytics. You can also integrate your account with KISS Metrics and Optimizely. You can integrate your account with CRMs like Salesforce, Soho, and Sugar CRM. What this will do is once you integrate your account with those um, CRMs, or your calls will start appearing in those CRMs associated with the correct contact. You can also turn on Enhanced Caller ID within the Account Settings area. Account Enhanced Caller ID allows you to attempt to pull back the full name and, and billing address information for a particular caller. This allows you to either manually do this call by call, or you can choose to have the system automatically do this each time a new caller calls in. This has a premium rate of 20 cents per caller, and right now it's only available in the United States and Canada. When you're ready to add new users to your account, you can also do that within the settings menu by going to manage users. You'll notice when you're adding a new user, you have a variety of role types to choose from. These range from administrator access all the way down to call manager access. And if you're an agency on our gold or platinum plans, you can also choose to have this person have access, administrator access across all of the sub accounts within your agency. You can also choose to set up notifications that'll go out each time a phone call comes in through one of your tracking numbers. That's done within the settings menu by going to the notifications page. You can add a new notification here and manage any existing notifications. A call notification sends an email to a group of people that you designate each time a call comes in through one of your tracking numbers or through all of them. And you can set up different conditions about when you want these emails to be sent. The Daily Digest email goes out once a day, and it's a summary listing of all of your phone calls from that day, and you can configure how you'd like to that to go out here. If you ever have any questions about your billing, you can always come to the Billings page within the Settings menu to get some additional information. You'll notice that you always have an available balance within call tracking metrics, and you'll see that appear in the upper right. That available balance ticks down every time a phone call comes in and every time one of your phone numbers renews. It also ticks down when your monthly plan subscription three goes when your monthly plan subscription fee goes through every 30 days. You can set up your recharge settings here on the billing page, such as when my balance falls below $20, recharge it up to $105. When your balance falls below that threshold you designate here, your credit card will be charged to replenish your available balance. You can add new payment methods here as well. You can also choose to see invoices and have them emailed to you by clicking this great invoices button here on the upper right. Once you get to the invoices page, you can use the printable invoices option to choose to have invoices emailed to you on a regular basis or immediately. So those are the basics of getting started. I definitely recommend using our Help Center if you have any questions, as that includes a lot of documentation about 
common questions and issues that you may run into as you're setting up your account. You can also always contact us by clicking on the widget at the bottom of right of your screen and you can use the contact support option to either email us, call us, or chat with us, whichever is most convenient for you. We're really looking forward to working with you and we welcome any feedback that you have on the system. Thanks a lot for your time.